IELTS Reading Lesson 9 Matching Sentence Endings On this reading course we've been looking at the different question types. There are nine question types in the IELTS Reading Test and we've done lessons about eight of them. This lesson is the last one and it's about number seven, Matching Sentence Endings. We've done all the others in the previous lessons. So let's look at this type of question and how to deal with it in the test. As usual, we'll use the method or technique that I suggest, which is the keyword technique. If you want to know more about that technique and how to use it in detail, look at lesson two, the second video lesson in this series. Let's go now though to this type of question, matching sentence endings, with an example test that you can print Print the worksheet attached next to this video, try the test first and then watch the rest of this video or print the test and go through the video lesson step by step with me doing the worksheet with me. The first thing that we always do when we're starting any IELTS reading test is read the title of the passage to know what the passage is about. The title is The Rorschach Test. Don't worry if you don't know this test. Um, I didn't know much about it before I read the article. So you might not recognize the word Rorschach, but that doesn't matter now. At least we know we're going to be reading about a test of some kind. Then, do we read the full passage? No, that would waste time. We go to the questions next. And for this type of question, the first thing we're going to do is instead of going straight to question number one, first we're going to underline keywords in the sentence endings. You've got a list of sentence endings in a box below the questions. It looks like this. You've got these four choices of sentence endings. And we're going to underline keywords in all of them first. Because it's a matching activity, this is what we usually do. Just like in the paragraph headings lesson, we underline keywords in the headings before we start, we're going to do the same here. So, A, test people's creativity. B, interpret ambiguous images according to their own specific perceptions of life. C, diagnose a mental disorder. And D, assess subjects who are unwilling to express their thoughts. The main reason to underline these keywords is so that we can see a clear difference between the four sentence endings that we've got here. There's a big difference between these four choices and that will help us when we come to match the best one later. What do we do next? Well, next we start with question one. The questions should be in order in the passage, so if possible, always start with question one. If it's too difficult, if you don't understand it, or you're, you're struggling to find it, you can miss it and go to question two. But in general, we'll always try to do them in order, because the answers should be in order in the passage. So question one, we've got this beginning of the sentence. The Rorschach test is often used by psychologists too. Well, we could underline Rorschach test because that's a key word, but the whole article is about that, so more important is going to be often used by psychologists too. What is this test often used by psychologists to do? Then we go to the passage. Remember, read the passage at normal speed from the beginning. If you're skimming or scanning, you might miss the answers. So let's read at normal speed, searching for what the test is used by psychologists to do. So here's the start of the passage, and remember I'll just put at the top what we're searching for, test often used by psychologists too. So if we read through this at normal speed, you come halfway down to some psychologists. And then we found that from the, um, the question, and then we need to find what is it often used to do. So some psychologists use this test to examine a person's personality characteristics and emotional functioning, especially in cases where patients are reluctant to describe their thinking processes openly. So we've found the right part of the, of the passage here, definitely. What is it used to do 
by psych psychologists. We could underline some keywords in the, the part that I've put in blue. Examine, reluctant to describe their thinking. So it's examining people who are reluctant to describe their thinking. Now we need to match this to the sentence endings. So if we go to the endings, it's often used by psychologists too. Well, was it about creativity? No. Was it about interpret ambiguous images? No. Diagnose a mental disorder? No. Assess subjects who are unwilling to express their thoughts? Yes, that's going to be the answer because the passage that we just read said examine people, assess subjects who are unwilling to express their thoughts. The passage said reluctant to describe their thinking. Very clear keywords unwilling, reluctant, express thoughts, describe their thinking. Very typical IELTS reading keywords. So that means we can be 100% 100% sure that D is the best answer. So then let's do the same thing for question two. Look at the question, underline a few keywords. The test is based on the belief that people will. So what's this test based on? What belief? Then we go to the passage. And in this paragraph, we will find based on the belief that people will. It's right near the bottom here. You would read this at normal speed. I'm just going a bit more quickly. The underlying assumption is that assumption is the belief. What is this um, test based on? What belief? It's based on the underlying assumption that an individual will class external, external stimuli based on person-specific needs, motives and conflicts. So this part that I've highlighted in blue is where the answer is. Class external stimuli based on person-specific needs, motives and conflicts. Let's look at the sentence endings. Well, we've already used D, so we can get rid of that. We've only got three choices left. Was it about creativity? A. No. Was it about interpreting ambiguous images according to their own specific perceptions of life? Maybe. Was it about C, a mental disorder? I would say no. So we'll have to go with B. Let's just match the keywords that we found then. Looking at B in more detail, interpret ambiguous images, class external stimuli. Interpreting something could be the same as classing something. Um, the images, the external stimuli, well, ambiguous designs was mentioned earlier in the same paragraph. So that's what the external stimuli are. And according to their own specific perceptions of life is based on person-specific needs, motives, and I think it said, and conflicts. So that's definitely the person-specific um, specific perceptions of life. Definitely the answer B. Finally, do the same for question three. Underline some keywords. What was the original aim? Not to assess personality, but to. Well, let's remind ourselves the original aim was not to assess personality, but to. And if we're reading further on in the passage, we find this part. In fact, Rorschach never intended the ink blots to be used. Never intended. That is the same as, as his original name was not. He didn't intend to do something. So, um, if he never intended to assess personality, never intended the ink blots to be used as a general personality test, what did he do instead? But to. Notice we have the word but in both the question and in the passage there. So, here we have the answer. Develop them as a tool for the diagnosis of schizophrenia. This should be an easy one. We go back to there. The passage um, made it clear that we're looking at C. It's going to be C. We've only got two choices left. It wasn't about creativ creativity. It was definitely about diagnosing a mental disorder. Diagnosis of schizophrenia. So that's it. We've done the three questions. And it was clear how we did it. We 
Remember, underline the keywords in the sentence endings, then start with the first question, then underline keywords in the question, read the passage at normal speed, underline keywords that you find, compare with the passage, uh, the passage with the sentence endings, and choose the best one. So we went, we went step by step through the questions in order and use the normal keyword technique to find the best match. Finally, let's quickly look at a keyword table for the vocabulary from this lesson, from this passage and the questions. We have, as usual, keywords in the questions and in the sentence endings in the left column and similar words in the passage in the right column. And here they are. Assess subjects examiner persons, unwilling to express their thoughts, reluctant to describe their thinking, based on the belief that the assumption is that, according to their own specific perceptions of life, based on person-specific needs, motives and conflicts. Original aim was not, never intended, intended diagnose a mental dis disorder, diagnosis of schizophrenia. As usual, we find the answers by matching the keywords. The similar vocabulary in the questions and in the passage is what gets us those answers. So that's the end of the lesson about sentence endings matching. And that's the end of this series of lessons about the different question types in IELTS reading. The next lesson will be a quick summary of the reading module, the reading part of the test with some general tips and advice to finish.